Hello everyone, my name is, is Jiang Zhang. The title of this talk is Tweaking the Asymmetry of Lattice-Based Public Key Encryptions and Signatures. This is a joint work with Yu Yu, Su Qinfan, Zheng Feng Zhang, and Kang Yang. Okay, this talk has four parts. In the first part, we will give a short introduction. We will show how to take the asymmetry in the design of lattice-based public key encryptions and signatures in the second and the third parts. Finally, we will end this talk with a short conclusion. Let's move to the first part. Since the introduction of public key encryption in 1976, the public key cryptography has been widely deployed in real applications but most of them are based on the hardness of solving integer factorization and the discrete logarithm problems. So far, this is good for algorithms on classical computers. However, because of short quantum algorithm, the basis of those classical schemes is shaken. In fact, if large quantum computer is available, those schemes based on the traditional number theoretical problems will become insecure. Actually, as commented in our report on quantum threat timeline, quantum threat could very well become concrete in next 10 or more years. Facing this threat, the world has started many projects on constructing post-quantum crypto systems that can resist against quantum attacks. One of the main research directions in this area is lattice-based cryptography. For example, lattice-based schemes are about 41% and 46% of all submissions in the first and the second round of least PQC competition, respectively. The last decade has witnessed the great development on lattice-based schemes, but they are still less efficient than their counterparts, than their number theoretical counterparts in terms of public key, suffix, or signature size. In particular, for adequate security, lattice schemes typically need sounds of bytes, but the latter only requires at most a few hundred bytes. In fact, reducing the size has become one of the main problems on constructing practical lattice schemes. After observing the asymmetry in the design of lattice schemes, we propose the asymmetrical MLWE problem and exploit its asymmetry to obtain public key encryptions with shorter public keys and suffixes. Compared to the least round two submissions at category three security, we achieve the smallest public key and suffix size. Both are less than 1000 bytes. We also propose asymmetric MCs problems for obtaining signature schemes with shorter public keys and signatures. Compared to the least run two submissions, our scheme has smaller public key and signature size than Delison. Third, we adapt the best loan attacks and their variants to the asymmetric problems and conduct a subtle analysis on choosing concrete parameters. For example, we consider two variants of the primary tax and three variants of the dual tax to make use of the asymmetry of the underlying problems to reduce the complexity. Let's move to the second part. The learning with errors problem was first introduced by Regev in 2005, which basically asks an algorithm to solve a Loisid modular equation. That is, B equals A times S plus E, 
where A is the uniform matrix, S is the uniform vector, and E is chosen from a noisy distribution chi with the parameter eta. The decision variant asks an algorithm to distinguish the LW tuple from uniform, which is as hard as the computational LW problem. A major variant of the LW problem is the Hermit Lama form LWE, where the secret S is also chosen from the Loise distribution. The LW problem is probably as hard as some lattice problems such as the SIVP and the SVP problems in the worst case. Many lattice-based public key encryptions are based on the Linder Packard scheme at CTRSA 2011. The public key and the suplex basically consists of several LW tuples. Concretely, the public key is generated by randomly choosing a matrix A, vectors S0, E0 from the Loise distribution, set A, B equals to a times S0 plus E0 as the public key and S0 as the secret key. Given a bit mu, the sender randomly chooses vectors S1, E1, and E2 from the Loise distribution. Set C0 as the transpose of A times S1 plus E1 and C1 as the inner product of B and S1 plus E2 plus an encoding of mu that is mu times q over 2. The receiver computes u equal to c1 minus the inner product of s0 and c0. One can easily prove the security of this scheme by applying the LW assumption twice. The correctness of this scheme requires the decryption noise E prime, which is determined by s0, s1, E0, E1, and E2 is smaller than Q over 4. Clearly, the decryption noise is mainly dominated by the inner product of E0 and e S1 and that of S0 and E1. When it comes to choosing concrete parameters, we have two conflict constraints on the parameter eta. On the first hand, the correct list is determined by the function g alpha n, which is the size of the decryption noise, and is, is expect, expected to be as, as small as possible. This leads to set a small eta. On the other hand, the security is related to the function f alpha n, which is the size of the secret vectors s and u and is expected to be as large as possible. This leads to be to a larger eta. Ideally, for targeted security level, kappa, we hope to pick an eta for simulating naturally, achieving 2 to the minus kappa decryption error and 2 to the kappa security. But typically, there does not exist such an optimal eta. If we set the parameter for achieving a given security, there usually exists much room for the decryption noise. In other words, the size of the decryption noise might be far smaller than Q over 4. Then we can use the compression function to obtain shorter public key and suffix, which basically cut off the lower bits of the public key and suffix. This operation can reduce the size of public key and suffix, but it will result in a much larger decryption noise. This is okay as long as the final decryption noise is still less than Q over 4. Unlike the case without compression, after compressing the public key and suffix, we find that the law of S and U in the decryption noise is asymmetric. In particular, if the X part that is introduced by the comp by compression, the public key and the suplex is much larger than the E part, then the size of U is less significant than that of S in the decryption noise, E prime, 
In other words, reduce the size of UU will significantly reduce its decryption noise. But reducing or increasing the size of E will not change the decryption noise too much. This feature inspires us to reduce the size of S as much as possible for smaller decryption noise that increase the size of E for maintaining the security. Then, we can further make use of this asymmetric to obtain new skins by using different parameters eta1 and eta2 for the secret S and E, as well as different modules P P0, P1, and P2 for the compression of public key and suffix. By doing this, we can flexibly choose the parameters to achieve short public key and suffix, while at the same time not significantly affect the security. Specifically, we can set up smaller eta1, p0, p1, and p2 for short public key and suffix, but a larger eta2 for maintaining the security. Now, the concrete security is based on an asymmetric variant of the standard LWE, where the secret key and uh, noise are chosen from distributions with different parameters, eta1 and eta2. Obviously, when eta1 is equal to eta2, this is the, exactly the standard LWE problem. We conduct a subtle analysis on best loan attacks. The experiment so shows that. The security remains unchanged if we keep the product of eta1 and eta2 unchanged. For example, for the standard LWE with eta1 equal to eta2 equal to 2, this product of eta1 and eta2 is 4. For most the same security, we can also set eta1 to be 1 and eta2 to be 4, such that the product of eta1 and eta2 is still 4. This basically gives us many choices of eta1 and eta2 for making better trade-off between efficiency and security. By instantiating the above scheme with the asymmetric variant of modular LWE, we obtain shorter public key and suffix. For example, for the targeted 108-bit security, both the public key and suffix are less than 1,000 bytes and are smaller than this run to submission Kyber for better trade-off between efficiency and security. Now, let's move into the third part. This small integer solution problem was first considered by Atai in 1996. This problem asks an algorithm give a matrix A, a vector T, and a real gamma to output a vector X such that a times x equals to t, and the norm of x is at most gamma. When t equals to zero, this is a standard cis problem. Otherwise, it is an inhomogeneous cis problem if it is chosen uniformly at random. Both cis and i cis problem are probably as hard as some nice problems such as the SIWP problem in the worst case. Now, we consider the identification scheme from this by uh, Lebowski at the uh, issue group 2009. Let S eta be a set with absolute value not larger than eta. The secret key is chosen from S eta, and the public key T equals to A times X. To converse the verifier that he has the secret key X, the prover first randomly choose uh, vector y from s eta, send w equals to a times y to the verifier. The verifier randomly choose a challenge c. For simplicity, here we only consider c to be a bit. One can easily ex extend the protocol to bit string of any fixed length. Finally, the prover returns z equals to y plus c equals x. To protect the secret key x, we cannot directly output z, 
Instead, we only output Z if the infinity norm of Z is not bigger than gamma minus beta, where beta is the maximum size of Z times X. In this case, for any choices of X and Z, we have a vector Y such that Z equals to Y plus Z times X. This means that X is perfectly hidden in Z. By applying the fit Shamir transform, we obtain a signature from Z by hashing the vector W to obtain a challenge C. In order to choose conflict parameters, we have conflict constraints on the parameters M, Bet, Gamma. For example, for security, we expect the gamma to be small, but for the computational efficiency, we need the gamma to be big such that the expected number of repetition is small. In practice, we cannot obtain an optimal choice of parameters for all goals. In private wires, signature scheme, for the security of this problem, we need a very large M, which gives a very large signature size. To reduce the signature size, we can switch this underlying hard problem from SIS to LWE by setting the public key as A times a S plus E, where S and E are chosen from um, S eta. In fact, the LWE problem can be seen as a special SIS problem where the matrix is a uniform matrix followed by an identity matrix. In this view, this change is intuitive as, and direct. After changing to the LW problem, a use feature is that the vector W equals to A times Y1 plus Y2, which is mainly dominated by A times Y1, as Y2 is small. In particular, the higher bits of W almost uh, equals to the higher bits of A times Y1. This also holds for the vector U. At the CTR CTRSA 2014, Bai and Gabriel found that one can utilize this feature to further reduce the size of the signatures by removing the part related to Y2. For this goal, we need to add one more rejection on the lower bits of W minus 1 C times E, such that it is not bigger, not too bigger, and will not affect the higher bits of W. Now, the expected number of repetition is dominated by two parts. Specifically, we can reduce it by either increasing gamma 1 or gamma 2. Notice that the signature size is also dominated by gamma 1, but it is irrelevant to gamma 2. This asymmetric feature allows us to use a smaller gamma 1 for smaller signature size, but a larger gamma 2 for maintaining the, the expected number of repetitions. To fully utilize this feature, we also switch the standard LW problem to its asymmetric version, such that the secret S and E are chosen from the distributions with different parameters, eta1 and eta2. This allows us to use different beta1 and beta2 for rejection, where beta1 is the maximum size of C times X, and beta2 is the maximum size of C times E. For security, in addition to the asymmetric LWE, we also need the asymmetric variant of SIS, which basically splits the solution into two parts and put different constraints, gamma 1 and gamma 2, on the two parts. By doing this, the expected number of repetition basically has two independent parts. This finally allows us to choose a very small gamma 1 for short signature and appropriately chooses other parameters to maintain the other features. By extension aging the above scheme with a symmetric variant of modular LWE and modular SIS, we obtain a scheme with shorter 
public key and signatures. In particular, for almost the same computational efficiency, our scheme has shorter public key and signature than the least run to submission, deletion. This finishes our third part. Here is a short conclusion. We obtain public key encryptions with shorter public key and suffix by taking the design of public key encryption using asymmetric MLWE. We also obtain signature schemes with shorter public key and signatures by taking the design of signatures using asymmetric MLWE and MCs. We conduct a subtle um, analysis on uh, choosing concrete parameters by adapting the best uh, known attacks to both problems. This is the end of this talk. Thanks for your attention.